Hi, I'm Tom, and in this video, I'll show you how to speed paint an ultramarine. This only took just over 30 minutes, obviously not including drying time. This could easily be used to batch paint a whole army. First step is to build the model. I'm using an assault intercessor. Boobity boobity boop. I base my model in black, but you can just skip this step and just start with McCrag Blue instead. This will make it even quicker. I'm going to be using an airbrush for speed, but you could easily replicate this technique with spray cans and brushes. The next stage will be to add a white zenithal highlight directly from above. Imagine the sun is shining above onto the marine. Just think where would the light hit it? Oops, I need a glove. Boop. The aim of this is to leave black in the shadows and lower parts of the model and white on the panels facing up towards the sun. And as you can see here, it creates a transition from black to white. In this next stage, I use McCrag Blue paint thinned with airbrush thinner. Pro tip. Always add your thinner to the airbrush first. This stops the brush getting clogged up. You want to be aiming for the consistency of skimmed milk with any airbrush paint. It's roughly one to one with airbrush thinner. I'm spraying this in thin layers over the model and then just using the air from the brush to dry it out. I'm using thin layers as it will tint the base coat of white and black, i.e. it will make it appear lighter on the white surfaces and darker in the recesses. This will add a lot of depth to the model. Here you can see it has a fade from light to dark. The next stage is to dry brush. Little tip for dry brushing, dampen your bristles slightly before beginning. I'm using white paint and I'm aiming for the raised surfaces and any panels. I wanted to make all of the edges of the armour and panels pop. Why the hell are you doing that? I can hear you ask. Well, I'm about to use contrast paint over the top and contrast paints are basically stains. They stain anything white and turn it into the contrast colour. This is commonly called slap chop. Right, then onto the contrast paint. I'm using Frost Heart, which is a lighter tint from the base of McCrag Blue. As you can see here, I'm adding thin layers of Frost Heart to stain the white areas. It will also add some shading to the McCrag blue areas. For the Emperor! Get back here, you. Here you can see the edge highlights are still here, but they are now stained blue. Then onto the other colours. I painted all of the trim in gold, the Aquila on the chest. Then on to black. I use this for all the armour crevice things. Don't know what these are called. Any cables. The sword and also the bolt pistol. I then based all of the pouches and holster in white. I then use silver to paint the backpack vents and the chainsaw teeth.
then base coated the eyes in white and any mistakes like here you can cover over with white paint and then the frost heart you might need to use a few layers for the eyes I use contrast blood angels red this is really vibrant red I then painted the scroll using some other contrast for lupus pink and skeleton horde. I then used school grunter fur to paint all of the pouches. Then onto the decals or transfers. These are super quick and really transform your models. Once you've selected your decals, soak them one at a time into warm water until they come loose. Then add a drop of water onto the surface you're applying it to and slide it off the decal sheet onto the model. Then use a wet brush to manipulate it and move it around into the right place. Here I've got a decal on top of another decal. So be careful not to move around the one underneath. As you can see here, the decals do not conform to the shape of the model. So to fix this, I use a product called Microsoft. This softens the decals and makes them conform with the shape that they are on. Just paint it over. Leave it to air dry and it should sort of melt and soften the decals and make them conform to the shape of the model they're on. Once the decals are dry, I use the knife to scratch some battle damage and chipping into them. This makes the model look a bit more realistic, like it's been running through a battlefield. Once the paint and the decals are dry, I covered it in a matte varnish. I use this Colorforge one as it's my absolute favourite. Then on to weathering. I'm using streaking grime to add a powdery, sort of dirty effect to the model. I'm using this knackered old brush to apply it. Slather it on generously. I then use white spirits to clean the brush. This, this should uh, should maybe fix this brush. It'll fix it. There you go, just like new. Boopity boopity boop. So you let the grime dry. I use the hair dryer to speed this process up. Then what you want to do is clean off some of the grime using mineral spirits. I use cotton buds, i.e. Q-tips, or these makeup applicators don't want to remove all of the grime, you just want to remove some of it. If you want it to look dirtier, leave a lot more behind. But you dip into the spirits, wick away some of the, the dirt, leaving it in the recesses. This is also good at covering up mistakes.
boop. So gave it a quick hair dry as well. This is what it looked like. Any big patches of dirt, you can just clean them up again. Make sure that it's as clean as you want it to be. Then I'm going to take it a step further and add some more weathering with a black oil wash. To make this, you just need a jam jar and some oil paint. You add a single plop of oil. Yeah, I'm going to refer to it as a plop, as I think that makes the most sense as a measurement. So a plop of oil and then a glug of spirits. The mineral spirits will thin the oil and turn it into a wash. Give it a big shake. And it needs to look about this thin. There we go, that's about right. It's like thin milk. You can test it on a model and it should, it should run into all the recesses and seek out the recesses. Done. I'm going to apply this oil and aim for the recesses. This will add so much more definition to the model. And this is layered on top of the dirt from the grime. It's mesmerizing to watch. So I'm aiming for all these sort of panels and recesses, even the scratches. It'll run into them and add definition to the model. After that, you can give it a bit of a clean up if it's too dirty, too black in some areas. You can see it's made a big difference to the model. I then use some tweezers and a bit of sponge to stipple on some battle damage and some dirt. I aimed around the bottom of the legs and feet and some on the shoulder pads. Also added a simple basic material of sand and stones and painted the rim of the base. And that's the model finished. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. What would you do differently? And what chapter do you think I should paint next? Please like the video, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. If you want to support me further, I have affiliate links in the description for Element Games. And please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can get access to my new Discord server. Thank you to my current patrons, you're absolute legends. Thank you. Bye.